Welcome back, everybody. It is time once again for that weekly update after a week that feels like it didn't even exist. Uh, when I woke up this morning, I was like, it's Friday? That was, that was a whole week gone, and I don't want to sound like a guy who continuously complains about the weather, but when you step out of the house at like 7.30 in the morning and it's already... 82, you, you know you're in for a long one, so I think my brain just compresses everything until it's not there anymore. So let's start this out with the, just come out and say it, nothing on the course has changed. Uh, my neighbor Eddie has one partner that works with him, and that gentleman went out on paternity leave. So Eddie, Eddie's gone. Like, I might hear a truck come in, and by the time you look, he's already gone. So he's doing the work of, like, four people by himself. So nothing has gotten dropped off. As nothing had gotten dropped off, I tend to just sequester myself into the workshop, which is not a terrible place to be. And I work on all of the stuff that... I'm not supposed to be working on, I guess, because the rift is still in pieces. I still haven't put it back together yet. I'm not 100% sure why, but it hasn't happened. So let's start with a little history that leads into a... It's not a rant. It's just a... It's just a general complaint. So this is just a straight-up old-timer. This is, uh, he has been dubbed Ultra Slashipede, and he was constructed like he was one of the original sort of parts bin builds. Uh, this is, of course, the body for an SC-8. Uh, as you can see, there's many holes in the back. It has gone through many iterations. It did indeed spend the earliest part of its life on an associated SC-8E, and then when I decided to build this, the body got hacked up and cut up and, a, and part of a cage got put in with a driver figure in there. So what this guy is, is you take a two-wheel drive slash and the STRC sells a kit for an LCG conversion, which you use with a Rustler chassis, because that is a shorter wheelbase. And it extends the LCG Rustler chassis out to the 13.2-inch wheelbase of a Slash. Well, I don't want that. Uh, I wanted the nice HCG, because I wanted to build a monster truck. But I fabricated my own chassis extension, which stretched the 13.2-inch wheelbase out to about... I think he's sitting at around 15 and a half... He's about 15, 14 and 7 eighths or so. Uh, it's hard to say because you have to run so much tow in in the rear end to get the power to go forward. These are the stock shocks off the SC8. There's really nothing to it. Uh, if, if there's any old heads in here from the go fast days, there's it's almost nothing but FLM throughout fast lane machine the gearbox the skid mount the front bulkhead the steering bell crank all flm uh, i found these associated monster gt tires in a clearance bin many years ago they're not very big really they're much smaller than say what would come on a craton uh, but they use a 23 millimeter hex so there's big 23 millimeter hex adapters on there. The drive shafts have been built out of T-Max drive shafts. So this was kind of, this is kind of my wheelhouse where I take something that's one thing and I make it into another thing because this is the thing I want. It, 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 it's a great thing to drive because it, it drives like a monster truck. It, the suspension flops all over the place. Uh, the steering has too much angle. There's not nearly enough strength in the front end to maintain what's going on here. 
That's a Taycan 2000 KV 4074 motor, which is for like an eighth scale buggy. So of course it's going through two wheels with a completely wide open differential. I mean, the other tire won't even turn. It, uh, it has been bashed and jumped and flipped and thrashed. The body is essentially barely holding together. And these are the things that, that I enjoy building. And I, I, I didn't know when I got into crawlers if they would offer the same sort of environment for customization. And I mean, obviously they do. Before I got into crawlers, and before I got into, like, let's make an ultra stampede, which is essentially what it is, I got into things like this. So the slash is what me, got me back, back, back into RC after a layoff of around a decade. And that layoff was only a very short period of a couple of years when my kids were just at that prime age where they would actually play with RC cars social media wasn't as prevalent the internet wasn't as all encompassing so we had a whole fleet of slash based vehicles because when the short course trucks first came out i was like that's amazing those were the dreams i had when i got my first kyosho ultima in the 80s so I started wheeling around in slashes, and you immediately recognize, much like crawlers, much like a Traxxas Defender, some of the fun is the limitations, and some of the fun is getting rid of those limitations. So this was born as a two-wheel drive Traxxas slash, and as it sits now, absolutely nothing remains. Uh, I have fabricated most of this. Lower and upper chassis. Once again, we have another fast lane machine gearbox uh, converted to run mid motor, the good old Avid Triad slipper. Of course, there's titanium throughout. The rest is RPM. It it handles extremely well. It's it's inordinately fun to drive. It's a tiny little vehicle with shocks from a low C eight buggy, and I had to fabricate almost all of it myself so like the rear bulkhead here i had to make in order to convert it to mid-motor and i love it and it proved to me and this is why i never really have anything bad to say about traxxas because it had it not been for the slash and later had it not been for the trx4 i would still just be in the house playing video games and I wouldn't gotten back into RC again. The Slash got me in after a long layoff and then the TRX4 got me in again after another long layoff. So I owe, I feel like I owe something to Traxxas despite the fact that this, this particular vehicle has like five Traxxas parts on it. That's the, the bell crank servo saver from a slash four by four, uh, nerf bars from a two wheel drive slash, uh, receiver box from a four wheel drive slash. Uh, this is obviously for a slash. I got the rear a arms for a slash. There's a couple parts in here. My big, big truck has parts from, I think it, it's 17 or 18 different manufacturers from like 12 or 14 different vehicles. So I, I, historically have built things out of other things to make the thing that I want if the thing that I want doesn't exist. There are no, uh, to my knowledge, at least at the time, perhaps now with bigger stuff like Arma, there was no such thing as a 15-inch wheelbase monster truck with a giant body on it. I'm sure you could get something of the equivalent now. But, like, at this time, uh, your choice of mid-motor was, I think, I think associated was doing a mid-motor for one of their buggies, and you could have, like, built up from there. But like I say, I'm a, I'm a, I'm, I guess at heart, I'm kind of a Traxxas guy. Most of what is in here, the, 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 the lion's share is still Traxxas-based. So fast forward to here and now, and this is not a Traxxas. Uh, generally, if I was going to try to build a Dollar General GT car, I would have thought, well, start with a slash 
four by four. The wheelbase will be right. The arm lengths will be right. You already have a lot of compatible pieces. But at the time, and it's only gotten worse since the time when I started picking up the parts for this, I have to curse my buddy. The guy who owns Colonel Mustard bought this Delta Plastic two millimeter Lexan Subaru body and then decided, eh, I don't think I'm going to use it. So it sat here for a while, uh, six, seven months and I was like, are you going to do anything with that body? He said, no. Uh, he said, give me 50 bucks for it. I bought the body. And then as is the case with most things, I ended up building a vehicle with a body in mind. So the Delta Plastic Impreza hides a Arma Centon. And there's really not much done to that senton aside from having to cobble fabric cobble body mounts the rear body mount is ridiculous because it was all i could get unfortunately in the front the skid is molded into the bumper mount because i was like oh well i can just shave that off and put a flat mount down and put a foam on the front to give some more support to the body that wasn't the case uh, so th this kind of holds the front bumper in place. It's all old stuff in here. This is an old G-Force uh, 3674. I think it's a 1900 KV or so. I run this on 3S. It's got an old Castle Mambo Max Pro. There's a BEC for the big old Sanwa servo, which back in the day, back in the day, before digital servos, that's still an analog servo. They were so power hungry. I think that thing probably draws six, seven amps at stall and would just completely brown out your radio to where you just lose all control. So I had built this because I kind of wanted to have a rally car. That's why the body is already so beat up. It's pretty easy to flip this guy over even as this thing sits pretty low. So it's already been converted to what it will probably remain, which is somewhere here under the bench. I have an Arma Limitless and I had bought some GRP sweep tires for it, only to find out that the tires that come on an Arma Limitless are significantly bigger around. Like, the, basically, if you put these tires on it as it sits, the chassis just kind of sits on the ground. So I said, we're going to switch gears from Dollar General Rally Car to Dollar General GT Car. And the reason behind this is what my small complaint, not even really small, this is a general complaint that I have, not specifically with Arma, but with companies that build this type of unitub design for their four-wheel drives. So this vehicle had some just generic mini-pin buggy wheels on 17-millimeter adapters rolling under the Subaru body, and as it would have come, it came with a pickup truck body. It's basically a 4 by 4 short-course truck, not the kind that you would compete with. And the problem lies in the way this thing is designed. So it's got a little stiffener bit, like a honeycomb section in the center of the chassis. It says he's got these little honeycomb guys down here. I drove this for about 15 minutes to try to get enough to make like a 10 second YouTube short clip. And then that amount of time, so much dirt rocks, twi twigs, sticks, you name it, filled this chassis up. Like, it was full up to here. So full that it filled the area between the drive shaft and the chassis, and the, the car completely stopped moving. At one point, rocks got in under this stiffening plate, under this under chassis plate, got in there and completely jammed the steering. I had to go and get a screwdriver to knock the rocks out. So when I brought it back in to blow it out with the compressor, I, I literally, and, and okay, I've blown this thing out with the compressor like five times. I can all but guarantee that when I turn this upside down and so that's just what fell out of it right now. It's already been completely blown out like five times. It's a dirt trap. So I don't want 
Gee, and also, I don't know if it's the nature of the plastics or what, but like, I know the dirt back there is fine, but it's like this thing is permanently dirty. So I said, I think the Subaru will have a longer, happier life if I can convert this thing over to a GT car and then figure out where there's a parking lot close enough to my house that like they just repaved the street so I can zoom up and down in front of the street and it does take me back to my teen years but at the same time worrying that a car is going to run over your tiny car I find does not lend to feelings of warmth so what I did is it had been converted from the Centon shocks to eight shocks. And I have another issue with the, the design of the Centon. Uh, single shock mounting points, it's a basher. I guess that's fine. But the shock is so long. That is the rear shock off of an 8T Truggy. Like I, I, oh, here we go. For comparison, here's the shock. This is a long arm conversion shock from from Traxxas, it's basically the same length. So I think these are 120s, 110s. So that's a 110 millimeter shock. So this thing runs like a 110 in the back and like a hundred and some in the front. I, I, that's, no one needs that much travel. I mean, I'm a droop guy, but what I ended up doing was putting Craton springs on 8T rears and then in the front these are Traxxas GTR ultras from I don't know what with spring the cantilever springs for a Revo in the front uh, which means the springs are too short so when it lifts up you get spring flop but it actually does it gives you enough so it actually, I've taken it out and, and run it around a little exactly as it's configured. And it's kind of a blast. Like these sweeps are so sticky and, and you got to warm them up. You got to do the to warm them up. So the idea is kind of to turn it into a, I don't know, I, I'm somewhere between bash around touring car and could I make a drift car out of it because I went through a drift phase some years back before there was such a thing as a dedicated drift car at the time it was you get yourself a Tamiya TT01 and you cut some two inch ABS and you squeeze it onto the wheels and you try to fruitlessly try to drift around in a parking lot so this is kind of the spirit of that but I think I, I live in a place where I'm most comfortable at this kind of 13 inch wheelbase like this is the size vehicle I like so that's the hope for the Senbaru as I've been calling it as a Senton Subaru and it's really fun but much like anything it sort of lacks a utility like I don't have a massive paved skid pad in my backyard and uh much as I'm loath to leave the house to go somewhere to drive an RC car I'll figure it out School's out for summer. I mean, there might be a day that's not blistering hot and I can take this out and try blasting around in a parking lot. It's a thing that could happen. Don't don't be too alarmed. There there was crawler stuff. Lil Yella and Zoidberg both got their full bro, uh, Outrunner conversions. Yella still has a little bit of work. I've been instructed by the provider of that flash speed control on how to reprogram it. I've ordered the parts for that. I will be doing that as soon as possible in the hopes of, uh, you know, tuning it in a little. As Yella had given up his electronics to make room for the Outrunner, I removed the venerable combo. This poor Holmes... Torque Master Expert 21 turn. One of the first motors I bought for Jolly Green before he was Jolly Green. That, that motor has been passed around. It's been in like six rigs at this point. 
So as I was swapping over the radio, because I swapped the radio out of Yella in order to avoid that problem of old Airtronics radios not working with newfangled uh, helicopter slash drone speed controls. While I was swapping the radio, I figured might as well just put the 1800 kV fusion in the fox belly. And uh, it is... It's everything you would imagine it would be. The stealth transmission is quiet. So he has not been wheeled. He was assembled in this way. We gotta find out what that's like. I mean, I, I, I've already, I've arrived at the conclusion that it's almost impossible for me to make a video that's under 30 minutes long. Because I can just talk and talk and talk. So be thankful out there, people who seek brevity, that uh, I don't know how to make the live, the YouTube live work. Otherwise, I could just ramble literally for hours. The fact that I have to compile and edit these limits my time, I mean, at least a little bit. So let's wheel this a little bit before it gets too hot for humans. And uh, then that'll be that. Then hopefully, one of my kids is in, I think I mentioned that my kid is in credit recovery. So... When you have to drop a kid off at school at one particular time of the day in the summer and then pick that same kid up at another time of the day, it really kind of blows, like, generally I would have a bigger window. I could start earlier, uh, but I can't because there's, you know, there's adult stuff that has to get done. So let's wheel a little. I like to get a little wheeling in every week. Uh, I haven't even let the rain stop me in the past. So we'll wheel a little and... By gum, by golly, by the next update, that rift will be put back together. I said it, so it's like a commitment to the rocks. Before I get too busy preconceiving notions, we will have to see what kind of bump is in the rover as the 12 tooth. I mean, is it is it too much low speed and in at the expense of not being able to zoot? Very, very, very hooked. It's got low speed with the best of them. Not gonna roll out. Take it down real slow. I think I'm scraping the front bumper there a little bit. If I can get that rear to come up. Oh, that rear tire's looking real good. Oh yeah, center it up. Okay, dragging, dragging the rear end a little bit. Okay, I got a little Dig that out a little. I got the belly a little hung. That rock is a plank, and if that if that passenger rear wasn't so stuffed in there, I do love an element axle. Can you push over? Push over without falling. Yeah. Now nah, I've got it. I've got it dug in now. So let's try to bump out of it. Now push me the wrong way. Get a little wider. I, I'm almost positive I've said this before that the Rover is an excellent reverser. Oh, look at that. Come on. Get that, get that front stuck a little bit. I can, I can pop it out. Oh. It was inelegant, but I didn't have to get up. 
still on the bucket. Oh, oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, deep woods are real good. Look at that up there. Come on. Full width bumpers. Doesn't have the most ground clearance. Has got, oh, I should, <laughs> there's something I should do in the future. I should weigh the bodies. The, the, the body bulk off. Who, who's got the beefiest body in the crew? I mean, we know some people are, are just already mathematically eliminated, like the Jimny. Zoidberg. Lil Yella. Get across. Oh, already picking up spider webs. I got another big uh, patch of spider webs to run through here. And that drag brake is. I, there's no tire movement whatsoever. He is real, real good for someone with so much high weight. The wife said to me a couple days ago, we need to get you a better camera. I mean, that's probably true. Uh, using your phone for a camera is great because then you've got a dual purpose thing. It's also a phone. I can also play video games on it. It's pretty great. I just don't use it to make phone calls. But it would be nice to not have the, which, how do I phrase this? Basically, if I zoom in, it does this thing with the microphone where then it's like, it like puts the microphone on zoom as well, even though I'm using an external microphone. Yeah. It's pretty good, the bump. I like, I feel like I could have a little more. So I have to pick a focal length and stick with it. Like right here, I would like to zoom in so that you all could see a little clearer picture of what all the suspension and the tires are doing. Like I would go like this. And like this. But now my voice is gonna sound all weird. Look at that, that tire. Oh, come on. I need it to drop, 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 drop. Don't drop, but don't fall. Listen. Oh, come on. Like he acts like he's LCG. It's so weird. Okay, I'll, I'll take that push wide. If that top tire can stay over the rock, Got the I've got the the skirt. I mean, I mean the, the the body would be absolutely getting mangled on the side of that rock if I didn't have those sliders on there. Dig would be real great right there, but hey, we're not comping, so boop. Just give it a little, give it a little revert. Yeah, see, this is a this is where the, the, it, the it's the triple-edged sword of the defender. Like there were moments that this this would have rolled out backwards but he's got big old bumpers I thought I had it and I got I got too I got too jumpity oh come on come on get get some bite get some bite on that front get some bite oh, he wants it he wants it and for how big that body is and how heavy he is It's all, it's all low speed. This is just brought to you by low speed. So the Fusion plus the Fox Belly is great. Because it moved that weight down. <laughs> and I don't, you know, I, I would never hate on a Defender body. I, I know what I'm sacrificing. All right, let's, let's try the... So 
every time the rover comes out, it gets a little better. I think that's good. We, 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 we strive for progress. I'm just going to try the, this is the one-hander, where you just point it and, and try to drive purely by throttle. Oh, I'm in a spot where i got to give it some attitude. This is just a nest of spider webs that he's maneuvering through right now. It's real good. That steering angle is everything. Turns like he's almost got dig, honestly. That's really weighted the other way. Let's see if I can extricate myself from the position I've put myself into. And no, no steer, otherwise that's gonna go. Now see, something that heavy and that tall I would have thought that that would have <laughs> that that would have happened sooner. I mean, it happened, but I expected it earlier. And as I'm sure I've said before, the slow motion roll the the longer it takes the roll to initiate and complete, the the better I feel about it. Because that means I've done something right-ish. Oh. He doesn't act like he's as tall and heavy as he is. He drives light. Get that nose down there. You know, now that he's gotten a little more uh, work on him, I think what I need to try now is he's got a Samix brass cover on the rear. Back from when I was still fighting the handling and now I'm not fighting the handling so I think maybe a little more like right there I feel a little nose weight but he does then again how much of that drive is coming from the rear I mean it's a bolt right just try it this is a uh, this is one of those things where the recipe doesn't seem like it should create a delicious souffle, but here we are. Gate Rover, Gate Rover goes hard. Can, can he, can he pinnacle? Look at that crawler going. Oh, get up there, get up there, yeah. So there, there's another thing that's definitely on the list. Uh, I'm supposed to take this down and move it. It's supposed to be attached to the new shed uh, so that I have a place to put my chipper, my trailer, etc. It's just, it's a tough thing to do with one person because that structure is assembled with nails. So I, I might at one point, you know, if I get a cool day, I might try pulling it apart. The real goal for the summer, real talk, is this rusty, piece of crap I want it gone but almost all my stuff is out of it but you know let's just sum it up in one word family and what better way to wrap this up and close this out than with the ubiquitous tinkle of the wind chime a featured player here in the canyon and to hoon around a little and see if we can last the two or three minutes of this outro <laughs> without breaking something because none of the parts inside this gearbox are explicitly uh, designed to handle. I didn't put the body clips on. <laughs> They're in my pocket. All right, imagine the clappy thing. Take two. He does not have a lot of, a lot of steer. That's a lot of rocks in the face. So much, so much power to go so slow. <laughs> well, okay. We've got a, uh, it's the upgraded, it's the bigger disc slipper clutch from the old Traxxas days. I, I want to say Revo, uh, from like the, the gas 
Revo Jado. Jado, not Revo Jado. Jado, the gas two wheel drive. So, but uh, that that scream, like you you can't you can't get it to not. This is like the muscle cars. Like we're we're, we're looking at a '60s muscle car here because. You know, they say, you know, chirp him in third. Uh, this thing can have the slipper clutch slipping at any throttle position. That, that high pitch is not the motor. And then what'll happen... Yeah, it's already getting hot. Uh, the slipper clutch will get to the point where it's at like... 200 plus degrees and then the pads glaze over and uh, then I have to take a whole thing apart and sand it and usually some parts have broken by then which is kind of why I, uh, I drive this a lot less now than I do rock crawlers because uh, you just pick those up and bring them out here and drive them and you very rarely break anything uh, this thing uh, I've broken more lay shafts the, the, the part the spur is attached to, I've broken more of those than I can even count. Like, that's a big motor. Those are big tires. It's a big truck. It's a big problem. Uh, I'm going to smash around with this here a little bit. And uh, I'm going to let you all go about your business and enjoy your weekend. Thanks for tuning in for the weekly update. This one was all over the place. There was some RC stuff in there. I did a little bit of rock crawling. I did some wheeling, so it counts. Uh... Leave a comment below, absolutely. Like it if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't. I'm adding in now, you know, hit the bell. As a, I, I sit about 50-50, subscribed versus not subscribed, but I think like 9% of my subscribers get notifications. And then at the same time, I think about like, what does my YouTube feed look like? And I don't know how many I get notifications from like three, so. There you have it. I can't expect people to behave any other way than I do myself. So, thanks again, everybody, for tuning in. Get some wheeling in. Stay out of the heat. Have a good one. I'm trying to get this thing to Brody, but it has too much push. I lift that inside front so much, the tire stops rotating. This thing is a dust cloud. And, uh, you know, that's that. So, I've uh, dragged this on far longer than I should have. Have a good weekend, everybody. Tried to make one more pass at the camera. Hooked the rear tire into the ground. Blew the drive shaft uncleanly apart. So, yeah. I should stick to crawlers. <laughs>